Ladies and gentlemen, on this Red Game Etc. video, we're going to be discussing the PlayStation 4. Recently, the FCC has approved the system, unsurprisingly, of course, and now we have information on its operating temperatures, its weight, its size, and well, probably the biggest reason for this video actually is the maximum operating frequency. Now, it's actually listed at 2.75 gigahertz. And so numerous websites are now wrongly stating that this is actually the CPU speed. And we're not talking about small websites, we're actually talking about websites that really should know better, pretty big ones. I'm not going to bother to mention names as you guys are probably quite familiar with them by now. However, the reason I am pretty damn confident that it's wrong is because the PS4 is using the AMD Jaguar. Now, the AMD Jaguar we know is based on the Cabini core. And we know that the AMD Jaguar is running on a 28nm process, and that runs at about 1 GHz to 2 GHz, and right now 1.6 to 1.8 is likely the sweet spot. So, it's actually known that, that if you go from 1.6 to 2 GHz, it requires a 66% increase in TDP, and that's, that's a lot is basically what we're going to have to say and it's not like that that's going to be less if it goes to like 2.1 gigahertz it's not like it's going to be like 67 percent in other words the heat and power requirements are going to be significantly higher and we already know that the amd jaguar the actual die is pretty damn humongous i think many websites and many people and i don't really blame viewers for this i do blame however a lot of websites at the moment for this Many of them are forgetting that there are multiple things in a console which actually constitutes and creates frequencies, clock frequencies inside the system. Now, the most obvious one that everyone thinks about on the systems is, well, the CPU. And most people automatically associate that with the speed of a system, or the fastest speed of the system. There are, of course, numerous other components which do actually have frequencies and clock frequencies inside a system or a PC. Buses, for example, do. Even a GPU. However, most likely, as far as we understand it, the PS4 GPU is running at 800 megahertz. So, what is my bet? Why do I actually think this is? Well, I think, and this is a popular theory amongst many in tech, but it just makes sense. I believe it's the actual memory clock. I think it's the GDDR5 memory clock. Now, there's actually a pretty simple way to test this. There's actually two clocks in GDDR5. One is for address and commands. Now, that's about 1.375 gigahertz on the PlayStation 4. And the other one is for data. And this is what we believe is the 2.75. And what we basically believe is since Mark Cerny, who is of course the architect behind the PlayStation 4, he is actually the lead architect, he himself has stated on numerous occasions in interviews, both written and verbal of course, that the PlayStation 4 will indeed have a 256-bit bus interface, a memory interface, and a bandwidth total of 176 gigabytes per second. So all you have to do is the math and you can see that those actually add up to be well correct and there's actually been a couple of threads on this on a various different tech websites and it's been popped around there have been some people who've said it's the wi-fi some people of course have continued to say that the amd jaguar is capable of it when it's most likely not especially this particular version uh, AMD themselves have tried to improve it, but the PS4, as far as we know, is running 8 cores. Um, that's pretty much confirmed at this point. We believe it's pretty much confirmed that two of those cores are reserved for system operating functions. Not 100% confirmed, it's like 80% confirmed, um, as far as I know. As regards to the clock speed, however, it's most likely the memory. So what does that mean? Well, 
it's still a very fast operating system, a very fast system, shall I say, regard this, so don't let it dishearten you, it's just, in this case, the memory is the fastest part, but that's simply because of the ridiculously, atrociously fast GTDR5 memory in the system, so, you know, nothing particularly to see here, it's just a, a standard, uh, it's just a standard number, so don't worry about it. So let's talk about the rest of the news anyway. Now the system actually measures 275 by 53 by 305. And so all of that comes in weighing at about 6.17 pounds, or if you prefer kg, about 2.8. That's actually a lot lighter than the original PS3. The original PlayStation 3, you know, the really fat one, um, weighed about 5 kg, so it's almost at double the weight. And the slim, the slim 9 PS3, the, you know, the small one, the later model, shall I say, that actually weighed about 3.5 kg, or about 7.7 pounds. So it's actually a significant difference. There's about 1.5 one and a half, let's say, pounds of weight difference, which I'm sure many of you will agree is quite significant, to say the least. So what about operating temperature? Well, operating temperature of the PS4 is actually listed between 5 and 35 degrees Celsius. That's actually pretty damn cool. Uh, the original PS3 was operated, or should I say, should be operating between 35 and 45 and indeed sometimes it could actually hit the 60. Now if it actually hits 60 that's where you've got the somewhat less infamous than the RROD but the still somewhat infamous yellow light of death which basically meant this console was actually overheating. And now one of the reasons for this low power output is simple the AMD Jaguar and I don't mean to bang on about it or anything like that but it's really simple they chose a very low power, very lightweight cores. I don't remember the exact wattages per core, but I think it's around 7 or something like that. It's really low. Um, and so it's pretty damn cheap to run in terms of power requirements. It means it puts out very little energy. And so Sony want to make sure that this thing runs quietly. They want to make sure it runs cool. That's one of the reasons that we're almost positive that it's not going to be running much more than 1.6 to 1.8 gigahertz in terms of clock speed because, as I said, then you're looking at over a 60% increase in TDP and that is when you start getting really bad news for a very small amount of actually performance. I mean, let's say, face it, 1.6 to 2 gigahertz, is it really worth that 66%? Probably not. Remember as well that the PS4, most of its performance increase is going to be coming from the APU design. That doesn't mean, of course, that the CPUs are doing naught. They are, of course, contributing heavily towards the system's overall performance. But that is to say that they are not solely responsible for the system's performance. Anyway, that's just about it for this particular video. I'll let you know if anything changes, of course, but as far as I understand it, and from popular theory, it is indeed the memory that is a 2.75 gigahertz. Anyway, if anyone has any questions, you can mosey on over to facebook.com slash redgamingtech, and you can address me specifically. That would be either Crimson Rain or slash Paul, whichever one you prefer, and regular viewers, viewers know that anyway, but I'm just pointing it out in case you're a brand spanking newbie, and I will see you soon. I've got more videos record, I tell you, so I will see you soon. Take care and have a good day.